So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews with myself, Matthew Rowland. I'm joined by my very special guest. It is, of course, Finty Williams. Thank you for joining me. It's a real pleasure, Matthew. It really is. Thank you for asking me. No, that's all right. Not a problem at all. Now, obviously, at the moment, life is completely bonkers. Um, life, as we know, it has completely changed. Obviously, you know, we've had lockdown earlier this year. We're potentially heading back into a second lockdown you know, a lot of people, their livelihoods have completely been turned upside down. I mean, for you, how did you cope with the early stages um, of lockdown? And, and how did you keep yourself, um, you know, sort of entertained, really? Um, well, it was it was quite hard very early on because my boyfriend had just done two previews of his play at the Menier, which I was lucky enough to see on the Friday night. So I think that was like March the 13th or something. Uh, and then he was told he had to totally isolate from the Sunday. So that was actually like two or three days before everybody else. Um, so it was those first few days were pretty tricky because we were coming. I wasn't working at all. Um, my son wasn't working, although he had been working, but then he lost his job um, because of lockdown. Um, so it was those first few days were sort of, they passed in a bit of a blur because it, it was such a shock. And also like everybody else, you were trying to garner as much information as you could about how long it would go on for, or, you know, how theatre was going to be affected or anything like that. Um, and then we sort of relaxed into a, well, my mother has always said that a very dear friend of hers who they knew when she was, she and my father were first married, had always said, you have to take the positives from everything. You have to find the pluses. And for us, it was, once we got used to it, it was kind of extraordinarily wonderful to get up in the morning, to know that you didn't have to sort of be on tenterhooks about suddenly getting a script through that you had to learn in two days for a self tape or or anything like that it was kind of it was kind of weirdly calm and and rather wonderful because we had a rule in our house that everybody had to get up so you had to get up in the morning you weren't allowed to stay in bed uh, and you could do what you wanted during the day but we all had to have supper together in the evening and you know, we listened to music together and we watched films together and we just sort of found a calm that, well, my boyfriend and I have been together for 10 years and for five and a half of those years, we never went on holiday because we were always constantly like, you know, who's going to get a job or if you haven't got a job, do you have to be available for one to arrive and, and all of those things. So it was kind of, it was kind of wonderfully calm and I really loved that I I took huge pleasure in getting up in the morning and thinking you know oh okay there's there's nothing to do today apart from be together and and as a mother you know get my small family through the next 24 hours and and I think it encouraged people to talk about how they were feeling and also understand that if somebody was having a bad day, you probably couldn't fix it. That's the amazing thing about, oh, I know, I know it's hot, it seems weird to say the amazing thing about lockdown, um, because there really isn't that many, you know, good things to take away from it. But the one good thing is that it has brought families, you know, that are, are living together closer together, because they've had that time where they're not busy doing work or, you know, focusing on other things. They can literally just go, right, you know, how is everyone? Let's, let's check in. Let's all see how everyone's doing. Um, you know, you're having that, that contact with one another. Whereas when you are, everyone's off doing their own thing, you can lose sight of even the people you live with. You can kind of lose sight of what they're up to and what's going on in, in their own mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think it's really important to have those times and as horrible as it was, and it was horrible. And it was much harder for my boyfriend and my son because they both had jobs that, that they had instantaneously lost. Um, and then, of course, it sort of morphed into 
you know, checking in with friends and, and people seeing how they were. And actually that amazing thing, Matthew, of, of saying to somebody, how are you? And not expecting to hear, yeah, I'm fine. So what are we going to do next week? And actually, if people said, I'm, I'm feeling really wobbly today, to be able to have that time and that, and that space to talk to people. And yeah, I, I sort of found it extraordinary. I found it progressively harder as it's gone on. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I did find that initial sort of six weeks sort of quite extraordinary. And I think the other amazing thing is that we've obviously nowadays got things like Skype, Zoom, ways of communicating as opposed to just give them a ring on a phone. Um, you know, there's way, other ways of seeing people who you can't be in the same room as and, and just kind of just new ways of connecting with people. Yeah, absolutely. Although, <laughs> although there were a couple of times when I got up in the morning and I was like, well, I'm not going to put nice clothes on and I'm not going to put any makeup on. So if anybody Zooms me or FaceTimes me, they're not going to get a reply. <laughs> that, that also eased off. Then there was that wonderful thing of going, yeah, look, my hair is a colour that I haven't seen since I was 17. <laughs> Not anymore, I hasten to add. I gave it that one pretty quickly. But there was a sort of, you know, in this profession, there's a sort of uh, a need, especially when you get to be a certain age as a woman, there's a need to fill your face, Botox your face, keep your roots done, keep your nails done. Do you know what I mean? And, and there was a freedom in that that was extraordinary. And it was rather wonderful seeing my friends, you know, looking looking how they should look. I'm sure it wasn't that nice looking at me how I should look, but um, I sort of went through a, a stage of looking a bit like a sort of cross between a skunk and a raccoon, I think. I just, I, but, but it was kind of, it, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an extraordinary thing to see people just be themselves. And there's no pressures to, to, like you say, you know, be something you're not. Um, the other thing that a lot of people were doing was, you know, learning new skills. I mean, people were either getting into dancing, uh, or, you know, fitness, learning an instrument, baking. I mean, did you find yourself doing anything that you don't normally do? Uh, I'm on day 125 of learning Italian, which I love. Absolutely love. Um, I think... Uh, I think I probably irritated all members of my family by doing it, but I love doing it. Um, I wanted to do the Joe Wicks thing. I didn't. I wish I had. I wanted to go jogging. I didn't. <laughs> you know, I, I ate quite a lot uh, and I drank an inordinate amount of tea. Uh, but, you know, maybe I needed to do that. Of course, now I'm trying to catch up with the yoga and the Joe Wicks and things like that. And obviously your son and your mum, obviously Dame Judi Dench, uh, got a, a bit of you know, fame on TikTok as well. Did you kind of want to follow in those footsteps? Uh, no. My <laughs> son, bless him, I, I think I've always said, you know, that, that for, for me and my boyfriend and for friends of a similar age, that I think we were the least mentally affected by it possibly possibly I don't know I don't have small children who I had to homeschool and things like that because I'd have probably killed my boyfriend and he would have killed me but um I think it was very hard for Sammy to suddenly be without his friends his music his theatre all of those things that keep him going so after about two weeks he started up this TikTok thing um, and then he, obviously he was FaceTiming with my mum every day. And so he decided to get her involved because she was finding it very difficult. Um, and, so, and so he found this sort of bizarre platform for the two of them and it was great. And it kept them, you know, together and, and talking and laughing and all of the things that my mum needed a lot at that time. Um, yeah, I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit too scared. I joined in with a couple of the dancers and my son despaired me because they took me so long to learn them <laughs> that, um, that he moved on quite fast. My <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is obviously it's great to see people of all ages connecting 
and obviously you know it, it's such a, a kind of a new platform and and seeing like you say generations come together to do things that are at the end of the day it's a bit of fun um you know and it's it's just it's it's heartwarming and i know that so many people enjoyed watching those videos um even people i mean i must admit i didn't really know much about TikTok before that and I think it was kind of them who, who introduced me to it. It was it was really lovely and it was really lovely to see him because he really struggled in the first couple of weeks um really struggled and and it was really amazing to see him find a whole different way of communicating with people um and and people who shared the same interests as him and um, although I did always say to him, you know, remember that these are people that you know from a distance. These, these people, with the exception of, of, you know, sort of a handful of people, these, these, are, these are not to take the place of your friends who you can squeeze and hug and who know you. At the end of the day, you have to, you know, remember that, yeah, that people that that are there for you all the time you know you can you can make you know new friends on social media and everything but but at the end of the day it's the ones that are there for you day in day out they're the ones you've got to stick by yeah but of course you know they couldn't see each other and they couldn't interact as as they had been and i think that was really hard really really hard now, obviously, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, you know, uh, actor uh, first and foremost, what was it that got you into acting? How did you know that that was where your interests lie? Uh, well, when I was very young, my mother delights in telling everybody that I said I wanted to be an acrobatic nurse. <laughs> I, I loved gymnastics and, all, and I thought that, you know, if you could do a few cartwheels and Arab Springs up and down a ward, that would be quite cool. Um, and then I wanted to be a, a ballet dancer very, very badly and, and grew horribly the wrong way, you know, grew out, didn't grow up very much. Um, and I'd always been around the theatre and I'd always loved it, but I, I can't honestly tell you the day that I thought, oh no, that's what I want to do. It wasn't like a flash of light or it wasn't a... It sounds so wrong to say it wasn't a burning ambition, but I think it was so totally ingrained in me that it was, it was almost like a sort of done deal. So I did a television series when I was 17. I left school six months early to do it. Uh, and then I did a play and then I went to drama school. So I sort of did it the wrong way around, but you know, I can't imagine doing anything else. I mean, having parents in the public eye, did they ever try and sort of, sort of maybe push, not push you away, but kind of like say, oh, you know, maybe try something else? Or were they always very much, if that's what you want to do, do it? Um, th I, think th I think they would have been thrilled had I wanted to do something else. Um, and they were always very firm about the fact that I had to get exams and, you know, have some kind of fallback if it didn't work. But no, they never said don't do it, um, which I feel, I feel very lucky about. You know, I, I, I sort of wish somebody had said, okay, we're going to get a crystal ball and we're going to look into the future and we're going to tell you that your mother's going to do the Bond films and win an Oscar and all of those things and it might become a little tricky for you. But, um, but we didn't and we didn't know that and so... I feel extremely privileged to say that, you know, I've worked for 30 years now. And would you say that you, you know, I mean, you sort of look at your mother as sort of someone who you would love to, to kind of follow in her footsteps. Do you kind of look at her and sort of, that's where I want my future to be, kind of take inspiration from her? Uh, I think there's two different things. I take huge inspiration from her. Huge, vast. I mean, I, I watched her the other night in Murder on the Orient Express. And I phoned her afterwards and I said, I simply don't understand how you do it. I don't, I can't, I, I, I just can't comprehend it. She is so extraordinary. So do I, do I want to follow in her footsteps? No, because that would be a ridiculous thing to do. Uh, of course I want to make her proud. Um, but I kind of, I just want to follow my journey because if I was to think, 
I'm only going to succeed if I follow in her footsteps, then I would be on a hiding to nothing. Because, because of who she is, because of you know, her talent and her ability and, and the wealth of work that she's done. And also she, you know, she got to live through a time when you could be at the RSC for 14 years. We don't have that anymore. We don't have that, that sort of uh, luxury. Um, so yes, of course, I, I would love to be even, uh, well, I would love to have as much talent as she had probably in her little toe. Um, but, but no, it's, I have to just be satisfied and hope that what I do is okay. I mean, what would you say is, I mean, have you ever been given advice? Has she ever given you advice? And what would you say if she has given you advice? Is there anything that you really kind of thought, yeah, I, I, I'm going to follow that? Any, any sort of words of wisdom that you just absolutely thought, that's just perfect advice? Um, she's a very, very canny businesswoman. You know, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't tend to... She always said to me, if you do a job, then... The, but then you see it's coming from her perspective where she has stuff being offered to her all the time. But, but she does say, if you do one part, then try and make the next part you play as different from that part as you can. Um, but, you know, we, we don't have that sort of uh, luxury. We just have to take the jobs <laughs> when they come along. And if you're just playing the same person, you're just playing the same person. Um, she is, she's extraordinary at, at Shakespeare at teaching Shakespeare. Uh, she's quite fierce when it comes to how you speak it. Um, I don't tend to run too many audition pieces past her <laughs> if they're Shakespeare. Um, but no, she's kind of let me get on with it, which I sort of, I really admire. Uh, Cause then you make your own mistakes and you don't have anybody to go, you know, well, you told me not to do it. So. Have you got a dream job going forward, a role that you would love to play or a program or a, a project you would love to be a part of? Uh, well, I, I trained in musical theatre at Central um, and I would give my right arm. Well, there are two parts I'd really love to play. I think I've, I think I've passed the point of playing one of them. I'd love to play Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors. Would really love that. I think that may have passed me by. Um, and I would love to play Miss Adelaide in Guys and Dolls. So two fantastic roles there. That I, I, I definitely could see you in both those roles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about Audrey anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, one question I wanted to ask, because it's, I mean, Finty, I mean, where did that come from? It's such an interesting uh, name. So where did that come from? Uh, my father made it up when I was born. Oh, wow. Because they thought they were going to have a boy and they were going to call him Finn. And when I was born, he said to my mother, it's not Finn, it's Finty. And I'm really, really happy when I, I, I think I was trying to find my, or whatever you call it, Twitter handle or whatever you, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, I, and I typed in Finty and I thought, well, I'm going to be the only one. And there was a whole list of them. There were, there were hundreds of them. <laughs> I sort of feel like we're a little tribe. <laughs> I mean, it's, I was gonna say, it's, it's, it's nice when you get sort of slightly different names because, you know, you, nothing wrong with, you know, sort of your Hannahs and your, your but it's nice to see something that, that's just completely sort of, I suppose, unique in a way because you don't tend to get many uh, Finties. So it's a, a lovely name to, to come across. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I feel very proud of it. Now, I just want to say it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I could continue talking for hours. Um, but are there any messages that you would like to give to anyone who is listening in hospital at the moment who's not having the best of times? Anything you'd like to say to them? Oh, goodness me. I, my heart is with you all. Um, try and find something that brings you joy. Um, whether it's a film or a song or or, you know, pictures of a place that you've been to. You know, I think there's a big difference between happiness and joy. And I think joy is when your heart literally feels like it's warmed. And, and I, I think that that's really important. And never, ever lose the hope that the situation will change. Thank and you. just send my love to everybody. 
thank you so much, Vint. It's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, all the best to all of your family. I hope they're all keeping well. Of course, keep safe. And thank you again for giving up your time. Thank you so much.